Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about some basic functions uh, because uh, later on we're going to look at building functions from these basic functions. And we're going to begin talking about a, a fundamental um, property of functions that we'd like to know uh, we can determine about the function. And this is what we call continuity. We want to know whether a function is continuous uh, in certain parts of its domain or over its whole domain. Continuity in terms of a, a sort of a non-mathematical way of doing it really is if I have a domain, let's suppose it's an interval from A to B, and my function goes from A to B like so. And if I can put my pen on one end and trace over to the other end without taking the pen off, then it's continuous here on AB. Right, now if by chance it does this kind of thing, okay, then when I trace through it, it stops here, then I've got to jump across to here to get continue on. So at this point here, C, it's what we call discontinuous at that point. Now we'd like to know whether there's intervals of continuity, uh, where it is continuous. So in this case here, it would be from uh, negative infinity to C, okay, and then from uh, C to positive infinity, but it's not continuous. All right, so here's where it's continuous. All right, this is continu discontinuous at C, and this is continuous right on this on these intervals. All right, negative infinity to C and C to infinity. All right, so in this case, the very first function we're going to talk about is what's called the identity function. It just returns x. Now remember, a function. Uh, is a process. You apply that process to the x value, right, to produce a y value, and in this case it just produces the same x value back again. That's why we call it the identity function. It has uh, some uses when we start talking about functions in more detail, so it's important to know this one. You'll notice here that it goes through the origin. Right, now when uh, x is uh, 1, Notice that y is 1. All right, so it's going through, if I look at my x and y values, all right, when x is, say, negative 2, I get y is negative 2. When x is negative 1, all right, I get y is negative 1. When I get x is 0, I get y is 0. When x is 1, I get y is 1. And when x is 2, I get y is 2, and so on. Notice it goes on forever by these arrows. So what is the domain? The domain are all the x values. And notice that we can choose any x values we like. So it's going to be that. And the range, all right, is all the y values that are produced. And there, of course, they're going up forever and going down here forever. So it's negative infinity to infinity again. Now, where is this continuous? All right, this is continuous everywhere. We can trace over this line completely without taking our pen off it. So it's continuous on all real numbers. Or well, that is from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. All right, so it's continuous here. What we say is it's continuous on its entire domain. All right, so that's the identity function. Very easy one to deal with, um, and it's going to have some good uses later. Now, the next one is called the squaring function. So the process that the function done is, does is it squares the x value. All right, so if we did uh, a table of values here, 
Then when I had negative two, I'd square that, I'd get four. Negative one squared would give me one. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one and two squared is four. So you notice that here's our points. So this is one, one. And this is negative one, one and so forth. So this is our squaring function, and we want to ask ourselves, well, what is the, the domain of this? Well, what numbers can we square? Well, we can square any real numbers, so it's all real numbers is the domain. What is the range? Well, the range of the y values produced, now you'll notice that being a quadratic and a squaring function here, Whenever we square a number, we get a uh, positive answer. So the smallest value we actually get is zero. So that means the range is zero. And after that, everything is positive. So it's zero to infinity. Now, when is this continuous? Well, we can trace over this without taking our pen off. It goes up forever here and up forever here. So we can trace over this uh, without taking our pen off, so therefore it's continuous right on the entire domain. So again, a very nice function. Uh, so that is, it's uh, continuous here then on the interval negative infinity to infinity. Now a couple of the things we can tell from this one here. Uh, as opposed to the identity function. The identity function, you'll notice here, is, is always going up to the right, so it's always increasing. Now, in the case of the uh, squaring function, we do have a change. From here through until we get, so when we're following the x values, through, notice that the y values are falling towards zero. So consequently, uh, this function is decreasing from negative infinity, the x values we're looking at, to zero. Okay, And if we look after that, from zero onwards, as we follow the x values across to the right again, the y values are rising, the function values are rising, so this is increasing. Uh, from zero to infinity. All right now, it's important to get make sure you get these in the right order. Okay, smallest number on the left. Okay. All right. So that's the uh, squaring function. Next one is the cubing function. So here, the process is we want to cube, multiplying by itself. All right, the x value. All right, now if we look at uh, actually uh, some values here of that, if I do negative two, I get negative eight. If I do negative one cubed, I get negative one. When I do zero cubed, I get zero. One cubed, I get one. Two cubed, I get eight, and so forth. And so this is why we get this function looking like this. Okay, so we go across to negative 2, and it goes down to negative 8. Go across here, 1, 2. So negative 2 goes to negative 8 down here. 2 goes across to positive 8 up here. And, of course, negative 1 goes to negative 1 here, and 1 goes to 1 here. All right, so notice that we do have this... Um, <coughs> graph built up here. Now it goes up forever here, goes down forever here. Okay. Now let's ask ourselves what is going to be the domain? Well, the domain, what numbers can we cube? Well, we can cube any real numbers without restriction on that. So that's going to be the domain. What about the range? Well, you'll notice that we're actually producing positive and negative numbers. So every negative number will produce a corresponding negative number over here. So somewhere we're going to cover every real number. 
So we have that, negative infinity to infinity. And so when is it continuous? Well, we can trace over this without um, taking our pen off, so it's continuous again on the entire domain. All right, now, the next thing, where is it increasing and decreasing? Well, the interesting thing is, as we move across in the, X, in the positive x direction, we always look at when x is going towards the right. You'll see here that the function values are getting larger, 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 and larger and larger. So it's moving up to the right, all right, all the time as we move this way. And so therefore, f of x equals x cubed is... Uh, increasing, always increasing, on the entire, uh, the entire domain. Okay, so that's uh, this particular function, the cubing function. Right, so there's some basic functions uh, that you need to be um, familiar with, the identity function and its characteristics the squaring function and its characteristics, and the cubing function with its characteristics. As later on, we're going to look at um, actually uh, building functions from these basic functions, so we need to know what their characteristics are.